I've got my sweater, right? I've cut the seams out, I've cut the arms out, and I've just left with the fabric, the body of the, fa of the sweater. And I'm just going to lay the cutting board on, and I've got my wheel. Be careful with this because it's a very, very sharp gadget. It's a blade, very sharp blade. It has a, a, a guard on it. So just open the guard, and I must use my ruler. My ruler keeps my fingers well away, and I just go up the edge, and I can have any measurement I want. As long as that strip won't drop to bits, it's strong enough to work with. Some fabrics, you'll cut them and they will shred and drop to bits. Don't use them. It's not worth it because it makes a lot of mess on the floor and you'll be forever hoovering up. So that's beautiful, that's your old sweaters. When you think of all the lovely colour sweaters you've thrown away after you've shrunken them by mistake. I try to shrink them on purpose now, so I've got them for my rugs. So that's the pieces of fabric we want to use. If you're using a woven fabric, we tend to give a little nick and we tear it. And if I tear that, I've got the straight of grain and then I will cut that one the same way. So that's been a tweed skirt. We use a lot of blankets. Once again, that's been felted up and I have actually dyed it because it was white and I didn't want a lot of white. So this one again, you tear it, you get the straight of grain and then you can cut. You can cut that one with the rotary cutter as well. Right. Depending on the quality of fabric you're using is to the width. So that's fine, that's great to work with. Now this is the hooky technique we're going to do. Just remember they've all got little hooks on the end here. I do have all these hand turned, all different sizes, for whatever width of fabric I want to use. There's three different sizes there, three different shapes of handles. So we can have any one we want that is comfortable. It must be comfortable. You're going to do a lot of work here. Your hand is going to work very hard. So you want it comfortable and nice to hold. So we call this one the easy grip and that's one a pear shape. So I've got my strip of fabric and the loops are on the right side, right? You're working on the right side. So you're creating a pile, you're going in and you're catching a piece of fabric and you're pulling it through to the top. I'm demonstrating doing the hooky out of a frame because it's not everybody wants to use a frame or has room for a frame. You can do it on your knee. I do use a frame personally because I can work twice as fast and I have a much better tension. But this lets you see how you can just go in, grab the fabric, pull your loop up. Any height of loop, it depends what, what uh, texture you want to create. You can pull little loops or high loops, it's entirely up to you. And you just leave a little space between each one and you're actually drawing with your fabric. You can go anywhere you went, want on your backing. And you start with a little end on the top and you finish with a little end on the top. And then they get cut off, so they're lost in the pile. You can go in with the next piece of fabric and you'll go in the same hole, pull that one through, and you're off again. My hook goes in. Now I push the hook right in. Now that hook is made especially with a fat shank because it's the fat shank that opens the fibres of the backing. Well, it's actually called a lap frame with grippers on. So these grippers are on four sections and it'll just sit comfortably on your knee so that you can work comfortably watching television on a night with your feet up. It doesn't take up a lot of room and your work will just sit comfortably on those grippers and it won't move. Fabulous. I can actually do a floor-sized rug on that frame because I can just move it about. So I've got my little fine strips here and I've got this time I've got my fine hook. See this little hook on the end there? Just a very, very fine hook. And I've got my little piece here. So this is my front of my rug, the right side. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to catch the little loops. And I'm more or less going in every hole with this one. It's very, very simple and easy to do. This is directional hooking. I'm hooking in straight rows because I'm trying to create a sort of stone or brickwork. If I want to stop, I'll just go in with my little scissors and I could take it away. These are proper little rug making scissors and they're really handy to go in, the bent handle scissors. So I can go across, I can go up and down, I can go in any direction I want. Just remember you're actually drawing with your fabrics. I 
I'm going to do a picture of Fleet to demonstrate. I have my dog here and I have a photograph of my dog. I've enlarged it and so I can see all the colours and the way his fur is flowing. Then I go for a photocopy, a black and white copier. And then I can play with the size of that and decide then as to what size I would like to hook the dog. You've got to bear in mind how many loops can you get in here to create the definition. You need so many loops to be, make the eye, so you don't want it too small. You've got to have room there to get his pupil and all the area around the eye in. So then you decide what size to do it in black and white. So I've got my picture here now of Fleet. Now I'm going to stick that down on the table with a little bit of masking tape. Just hold it down steady. Right. Then I have some dressmaking net. Now in America they have what you call the red dot, it's fabulous, but we don't have it over here. Uh, so I'm just demonstrating the cheap everyday net that you can buy in the market. So I'm going to stick that over the top of Fleet's face here and I'm also going to fasten that securely so it won't move about. The red dot is better because it doesn't have the movement where the net has. You've just got to be careful, you just don't stretch it. So fasten it all down. There you are. And now I've got my felt tip pen. And then I just trace round the area that I'm going to need. The shape of his ears the way his fur flows. You've got to be careful to get the important bits in, get the eye in, get the colour. I mean, that little stripe of white down his nose is very, very important because that's him. That's his character. So you just mark all this in. You want the light areas marking in, the dark areas. You want his mouth, his teeth. Now it will look strange at first, but these are the areas that you're going to hook, you see. So I'm just doing his head very quickly, right? And I've now got him drawn on the net. Don't know whether you can see it, whether it'll show up, but there you have it. Then I take my little piece of hessian, position where I want him to be. See, that's where I want him to be, and I'm going to pin him down. So you just can't escape from me. There we are. I mean, if you have more time, you're doing it at home, you'll probably tack it as well. But to save time now, I just want to show you very quickly. So there he is, and I'm going to draw him again. Draw his little marking down his nose, the shape of his face, his nose, his ears. And I'm just tracing him through the net. And you see what's happening, the felt tip pen is going through the net. And I've got my basic shape of my dog. Now, if you're frightened to do freehand drawing and you're not going to get a li likeness by freehand drawing, this is the best way to do it. And hopefully you've got your dog whether that'll show up on there and you see I've got him drawn on here and he's ready to hook now. <laughs>